Uh, well, thanks for the invitation, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to talk about uh, uh, cancer stem cells in mesothelioma and uh, whether uh, Defectinib will uh, be of use here. Now, first of all, I have to admit that I'm an advisor for Furostem, and that's the most important disclosure I have for this talk. Second, there is this concept of cancer stem cells. And, of course, we all know stem cells, but uh, they are, of course, very important for the, uh, containing your organ function, blood, etc. But, of course, cancer, cancer cells can also be stem cells. And they would have the exclusive uh, ability to self-renew. And it's also said they would have a better resistance for certain drugs. There are a few methods to identify these cancer stem cells using the LDH, and there are two subtypes of that, or a staining with CD44. There's even a possibility to, to further narrow these cells down to take a combination of these two uh, uh, staining methods. Uh, but then you still have the question, is this really a cancer stem cell? There is a lot being said about resistance, also on the first uh, day by Bob Weinberg, but is these, are these cancer stem cells resistant to all chemotherapy agents, or are there some that uh, have a low resistance or a high? Um, are they there for all tumor types, and what can we do to overcome this uh, problem? So, therefore, we can look at the literature, what has <coughs> been published, and for non-small cell lung cancer, leukemia, mesothelioma, and breast cancer, um, there is evidence that these cancer stem cells are indeed there in the tumor biopsies. And in one paper by Cortes de Derix, it has been shown that there were three mesothelioma cell lines that showed resistance to uh, cisplatin. So that is at least one drug. But how about the other drugs? And the other drugs are shown here that have been uh, identified by Canino, that on the vertical axis you see the, the LDH concentration and you see on the vertical axis the control, DMSO, pemetrexid, cisplatin, gemcitabine, and vinorelbin, all drugs that we quite often use in the treatment of mesothelioma. And if we look for pemetrexid and vinorelbin, it looks like that if you use these cell lines and you treat them, then compared to where you started from, you will find an increased number of these LDH positive cells. So the idea is that if you're going to treat your patient with mesothelioma, you will have a very nice response, but you will have a concentration of the cancer stem cells, which eventually will lead to a recurrence of the tumor. And this is something we have to work on. But is there really proof that patients have in their biopsies cancer stem cells? because so far I've been talking about cancer uh, uh, cell lines from mesothelioma. And we decided to use a previous study that was uh, run in my institution by uh, Wieneke Buikhuizen. Uh, and this was a study where we had treated patients in first line with cisplatin pemetrexid with or without exitinib. And the interesting part of this study was that it was translational. We took biopsies up front and after three courses of therapy. So this is a very nice model. If you make TMAs out of them, that you can stain them and also try to find these cancer stem cells. So this is what we did. And here you see that only using uh, LDH as the uh, cancer stem cell marker, you see that for paired biopsies, so this is from one patient before and after the treatment, you see there a sm uh, small magnification and a higher magnification in 11 patients. We could do this kind of experiment. It was an immunohistochemistry test, and if we look in detail, so it's more easier to look at, there is a brown stain. So we should not look at this in, uh, in extracellular uh, deposit 
but it's a staining of the cytosol uh, by the LDH, and this is completely different compared to the uh, pretreatment sample. So I think this is an elegant way to identify that there are LDH positive cells which might represent the cancer stem cells. We have put this in a different way, in a plot where we have on the vertical axis the H score, that is the amount of staining from 0 to 4 plus, and the number of cells. So the, the, the way if you multiply it, you can get a, an increase or a decrease. You can calculate. So at pretreatment, most of the dots are here on the baseline. And after that, you see quite a lot are going up. And this is depicted in this graph in a little different way. But there are also some tumors that did not show any increase of the H score. And it's always interesting also to look at those that do not really change. So at this moment, we also thought, is there another way to look at cancer stem cells? And of course there is. You could look at the gene expression with mRNA uh, for uh, the occurrence of uh, markers in patients who were uh, treated with chemotherapy. And this is the uh, the fold change of the ratio between the post and the pre-treated one. So there are different uh, genes that are upregulated, like SOX2, which also identify uh, that you are dealing here probably with cancer stem cells. So how can we solve then this problem? We, you have seen this uh, uh, graph before. Uh, this is the standard, but if we can then use a cancer stem cell inhibiting agent, uh, we might solve the problem. And this is, of course, a very optimistic uh, view, and we really hope that, uh, uh, that using a, a drug would uh, solve this. And one of these drugs is the, the well-known VS6063 drug, defectinib, which can influence uh, the number of cancer stem cells. And I would like to say stay tuned for the next talk because then you will really see if the cancer stem cells are immediately uh, influenced by a treatment uh, with this uh, by Rafael Bueno. But it will lead to a change in cell mobility, less proliferation, and also less tumor initiation. For so far, the, the idea about this is, is very sound, and we really hope that with the, the study that uh, is now ongoing, the command study, looking at an oral compound with a good safety profile so far that we like to treat these patients with mesothelioma in order to have them uh, in a longer state of progression-free survival. It's a switch maintenance study which has been uh, already uh, referred to. Patients with unresectable mesothelioma after four cycles of chemotherapy, if they did not progress, they are allowed to be entered in this study, uh, receiving twice daily 400 milligram of the drug or placebo. And another part, which has been discussed also this morning and maybe later on in this meeting, there's a stratification for the Merlin status. We do not yet know exactly what the Merlin status indicate, but I think that the next speaker will also come back to this point. So the primary objective is progression-free survival and, of course, overall survival. And I think for these maintenance treatments, it's very important that uh, also quality of life is considered as one of the uh, secondary objectives. So having said this and being very much in time, I can summarize uh, here that we have identified in our group of patients with paired biopsies that there are cells with the characteristics of uh, cancer stem cells and that chemotherapy seems to enhance it, but certainly not in every case. What we do want is to see if those patients in whom there was no increase in cancer stem, stem cells, if they did, did better than the other uh, group of patients where the cancer stem cells were increased. But this is work in progress. And uh, I would like to uh, end my talk and thank 
everybody who was involved in this, the group from the M NKI and also from Ferrostem who helped us with the analysis of the LDH. Uh, thank you very much.